But yeah, so Marjorie, what a great character, uh, oh. a really great actress as well. Um, right? Yeah. She's, Natalie um, Dormer. Yeah, she's in elementary. She's in a lot of things. Um, what was I just watching lately? That oh, Captain America. She's got a little, uh, the first Captain America movie. She's got a little scene in there where she basically makes out with Captain America. So again, Ooh. she gets to like kiss a lot of good-looking men. <laughs> I'm just saying, hey. she's, <laughs> she really does. <laughs> Um, but Marjorie's character, yes, you know, she comes along and um, you sort of, you learn slowly how thoughtful and devious and political she is, that she is going into situations with her eyes wide open, that she mm -hmm. knows the world, she has no illusions, she's the anti-Sansa, Right? And, yeah. oh my God, from the moment Marjorie appears, I love her. Right. I, I view myself as I'm a mix between Melisandre and Marjorie Tyrell. Um, but Mar what a, the one thing I love about Marjorie is that she demonstrates the she she is totally the old way. Right. She is OK. You know, manipulate men through sex. Um, you find your political openings, make friends with women, um, try to gain pe try to gain people's trust and their knowledge. Um, every everything you can do as a political adept in their society, she can do. And I appreciate that about her. But I think that she represents the idea that, okay, phone, hush up. Um, I think she represents the idea that in their universe, no matter how well you can um, adapt the old way, no matter how well you can um use the traditional political elements um no matter how smart you are or thoughtful if you can't upturn the board or change the rules you you're still in a very dangerous position and that moment for my for me one of my favorite moments is when cersei kind of grabs her by her hand you know they're they're walking together and she tries to pull that we're going to be sisters you and i and cersei says if you ever call me sister again i'll have you strangled in your sleep um, and that moment, that look on her face where she's like, okay, this woman obviously hates me and I'm going to have to have her killed. Um, I, I love Marjorie and I, and I appreciate her. I appreciated her presence. I love to see Cersei have to, you know, deal with her and try to convince people that she was a problem. Um, but my only critique of Marjorie is that moment where she could have, she should have not kind of chided Cersei. She was talking to Cersei right after the wedding. And, um, she sort of says to her, how do I address you now as queen or, or dowager queen or as queen mother? I'm like, don't take those shots at her. You know, Cersei has got an ego like the size of Texas. Just calm down, <laughs> you know? Those I, I didn't like her prodding at Cersei because she knew Cersei was vicious and you don't prod at people like that. You try to you smile and you say how are you and you could try to you know give them as much you know love and, and affection as possible, but you don't fuck with them. Um, well, I think that one. So I worked a while in politics mm -hmm. before I went into campaigning. Well, basically, it was kind of with the campaigning politics, and then in legislative offices. And it occurred to me that watching the different state assembly representatives and the state senators, what's really um, telling about a person is what they do when they get power over other people, mm -hmm. and people who take advantage of that to, you know. Um, mock others or, you know, make people do basic things for them that they could do for themselves. I'm just thinking of the senators, basically, <laughs> uh, uh, because they can, because you're right. their employee and you can't say no. Um, or people who are gracious and still treat you like a human being, you mm -hmm. know, that says a lot about them is what they do with their power. And I think in that moment, Marjorie um, felt like she was in her power was in, in the ascendancy and she was sitting in the catbird seat. And so she could afford to take those little pot shots because she had the power. And it was a very short sighted, you know, lesson that she learned rather quickly. So. Right. And, and I agree. I think that that's how you, you can judge people. And certainly I wanted Marjorie to be smarter than that because I, I imbue myself, you know, I think we all do this with media. We love, we sort of, we, we imbue ourselves onto it. We find the traits that people have that we identify with. And we say, it's like me. Um, and 
I wanted Marjorie to win, you know, I really wanted Marjorie to win the Game of Thrones to, to overcome Cersei because Cersei is just kind of an ass. Um, but I felt like Marjorie did play the game incredibly short sighted. She wasn't looking at the long term of, okay, this is your mother in law, you're gonna have to find a way to live with her. Um, you're gonna have to find a way to make her believe that you're not necessarily a threat because Cersei's all about those threats. Um, but at the end of the day, we can't deny that Marjorie's probably the most adept player at the Game of Thrones. Um, she understands the factions well. She understands um, personalities well. She knows how to manipulate people to get what she needs out of them. I mean, the way that she manipulates Sansa, which isn't necessarily super hard because Sansa's in a very delicate position, um, shows us that, yeah, Marjorie knows how to get what she wants. Um, but when she's comes up against Cersei, she's kind of unable to navigate that. And uh, I think that's, and, I, and like I said, I thought that their relationship was really interesting. Of course, the Lady Olena is, ooh, okay. I half looked at the screen, I'm like, what's happening there? Um, the Lady Olena is of course instrumental in that because the Lady Olena is the original OG player of the Game of Thrones. Oh um, yeah. Who, is probably if marjorie is probably the best youngest adept then olena is the best oldest you know she's the she knows what to do stay out of robert's rebellion stop riding this lion into, into freaking battle um i i appreciate olena um as an older woman because so, you know just from the kind of hollywood we don't see a lot of older people in media anyway you know we've kind of used our what is it called um Oh God! Symbolic annihilation. Um, we don't see a oh, lot, right. right? We don't see a lot of um, older people in media, and so to see this woman who has clearly been through it, who is going, who ends up surviving the younger members of her family, and mm -hmm. whom um, is so thoughtful and so intelligent and is quippy and doesn't give a fuck and is willing to it talks down to any and everyone despite the fact that she's not necessarily you know her house isn't although they control a lot of the food that goes in and out of the 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 realms they're not necessarily the most powerful house they're just very yeah, wealthy she, yeah, i think you she know. knows her limits and she knows theirs yeah and she just her ability to just tear you down in about three sentences um, is something that of course everyone loves and I love to pieces about Elena. I think that that to me that ability uh, that wit to me th that the wit that sort of Elena and Tyrion possess um, and right. even at times Littlefinger are more powerful weapons in some ways than um, Marjorie's political adept or Cersei's viciousness. Yeah with her I mean and the actress Diana Riggs who plays her it's just, it just embodies that um it's so believable yes her being that character you just it, it the quips and the lines and the sarcasm it just is all so authentic and you know, even when she was sort of um teasing um uh, what Tyrion's dad's name can't remember Tywin Tywin about boys about experimenting with yes. boys you know, she's just so worldly wise. And yeah, so I mean, I think there's been great casting too in the show. And really, there are not, I can't really think of that many weak actors or actresses. And that's also really adds to the depth of your understanding of the psychology of the characters. It's also mm -hmm. by the performances and of course the books too provide insight, but to the, the visual medium can kind of convey things that maybe in books you can't always get. So, uh, yeah. but yeah, but uh, yeah, so that character um, is, she's fabulous and, and you can see exactly why Marjorie is the way she is. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You can see that it was, it's not, you know, you can definitely tell that it's not Mace Tyrell who raised Marjorie. It's definitely Olena. And in their family, you know, just from kind of the garden scenes where, where Olena's hanging out in the gardens of King's Landing and she's with her grandchildren. Um, I don't know if they're, I guess they're they're her grandchildren. Well, whose who's children are they? <laughs> I don't, I'm not quite sure how they're related to her. They're, they're other Tyrells. Um, you can tell that she is the matriarch of this family. She's the one who teaches all the girls how, how to do things, how to, you know, how to be more perceptive, how to look at situations with a critical eye, the way that she treats Varys, you know, Varys, whom everyone's kind of afraid of a little bit. And she's just like, ah, you know, you're, what do you, what do you friggin' want, you know? Um, the way that she treats Lord Baelish, I, I love Olena 
to pieces. And I, I think that she she's probably, you know, she's definitely up there. It's hard because there's so many great female characters. Like, oh, I love her. That's my favorite. Ah. I know. Um, it's so, so spoiled for choice. Right? It's so difficult to just be like, well, I have one. No, I love them all. Um, and I, I think it's going to be interesting to see what the relationship between Cersei and Olena ends up being. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it was interesting, you know, and one thing I will say kind of to go back to Marjorie for a second is that, um, uh, Marjorie's decision to, to join up with the faith as opposed to resisting them, um, proves once again, that she's very adept at the game she plays. Cersei could have got out of prison too, had she just, you know, said, yeah, I, I, this is what I did wrong. Um, I confess and kind of given herself over to the faith. Um, or, you know, I, I often said too, had she admitted to the high Septon early on that, you know, I have sins, I'm a sinful person, um, and I, I'm repenting you these sins, she probably wouldn't have ended up in jail. Um, but her pride, her lion's pride, if you will, um, got in her way. And I think Marjorie, Marjorie, by all this, once again, just like kind of Catelyn Tully and a lot of other people, by all of the standards, by all the, you know, the fairy tales and the medieval history that we know, um, should have won because she did, she made all the right moves and was as adept as anyone else. Um, yeah, still... Well- Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I would say on the like on the death of Marjorie, the one of the reasons I was so disappointed was because I, I couldn't have seen a plot line where if you know Tomlin committed suicide, um, and Marjorie somehow managed to escape the the explosion, mm-hmm. that they might over his death and sort of loss of anything else to do come together. But as you say, maybe with the lady, um, Melania, is that her name? Um, sometimes the pronunciations escape me. Um, uh, yeah, so it's only, it's only, it's fine. It's only the super hardcore nerds that are like, you're not pronouncing it right. And it's like, yes. you know what? It's, it's not, it's not real history. We'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. I have to remember actual people's names. So it's good. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, maybe it'll go in that direction. Because yeah, I was sort of thinking about it. We were talking earlier too about you know how many women now are running things, mm-hmm. and um, you know the um, uh, I can't remember her name. The one who just killed the guy in Dorne, um, uh, Illyria. Yeah. Yes. So she's running things. Cersei's running things. You got Yara, who tried to take power, but is now on the run and looking for Daenerys. Daenerys, and like, and then like Jon Snow. I think he's the only bloke left. Right. He, he, I, I think he's the only dude left running stuff. I think so. But um, yeah. So uh, then, yeah. Just I was just thinking a little bit about how extensive actually female roles have become. Uh, mm-hmm. And it was much larger than I actually realized going into this chat. But as we started to unpack it, I'm like, yeah, there's there's a lot going on with the female characters in the story. Right. And it's it's almost hard to keep track of, particularly, you know, with, with the books in Dorn, right? The books and the show very much diverge. Um, but it's clear that Ariana Martell, who doesn't exist in the series, but is um, Doran's daughter, um, is going to be the one to take power in Dorn. Um, it's clear that the story is slowly about how these women came to power and how they rule kind of in juxtaposition to the men that um, came before them. And in a lot of ways, you see Cersei being more like Robert, um, kind of drunk and impertinent and not really caring, you know, thinking that winning and ruling are the same thing, um, as Tywin put it. And you see Illyria and Dorne in the show. Hi, Michael. We can't hear you, Bray. No, not yet. Check your uh, settings. Yeah. Oh, now we can hear you. Yay. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. It's not great. Hold on. So I'll check the control and see what I can do. How's that? Yeah. that well, I think it might be. That's better. No, that's better. Yes. That's better. Uh, you're not getting an echo? A, well, a bit. Uh, Hold on. I'll, I'll plug those in there. Science. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no more echo. I don't hear an echo anymore. Yeah. Yeah, baby. We're good. So, Sorry, I just woke up. It's fine. Good morning. <laughs> morning, I, do you have your coffee? Mm-hmm. Damn straight I do. 
Hell yes. Uh, I I have lost track of what I was talking about, but um, uh, back to kind of back to the beat. We're talking about um, just the extensiveness of women um, in the Game of Thrones universe now, kind of as people like Robert and um, uh, Doran Martell and other people have sort of died. Um, we we're Rob, talking Rob Ed Stark. Rob. Right, like all I mean, the Starks go, mostly. All those, basically, all the Stark men. Um, uh, uh, we actually we forgot there is one young boy still in power. It's um Robin Aaron in the Vale. Yeah. Oh right, yes, the puppet of Littlefinger. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who was the puppet of his mother too? Um, yes. Yeah. And I think that. That's right. Okay. And then Jon Snow, <laughs> and that's that's it really. Yeah. That I can think of. What about the Boltons? Who? The, the Boltons. Boltons. Oh, the Boltons. Well, is their house extinct now? Oh, what, what, what? At what time part are we talking about now? Because I we're I'm not. Like, well, remember, Michael's here now, so we're not allowed to talk about six. <laughs> um, oh, okay. So we have to stop at the end of five. Right. So remind me what happened at the end of five, so I know where to stop. Um, House uh, Bolton. Uh, go ahead, Michael. Ah, uh, shit. You know, I, I, uh, I know, I know that Cersei had like taken that walk of shame. Uh, John had been stabbed in the back. Um, shit, what else had happened? Oh, um, Daenerys had gone off on a dragon somewhere. Right. I think, uh, I'm trying to remember, it's been years since I read the last book. Um, fuck. You, you, you see if you can. Okay. Yeah, okay, no, no, I just, I know where to stop then. Just work. <laughs> okay. So basically the end of season five. Yeah, that sounds fine. Right. Hmm. Um, even... Yes. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I guess, yeah, we, we had kind of run through most of the women characters, except, I think, for Brienne of Tarth. We don't know if we went into her as much as we've gone into everybody else. And um, mm. Sansa, too. But I guess part of Sansa we can't really talk about, so maybe just stick with Brienne because her story we can we can kind of go into. But unless you wanted to say something else. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, go ahead. listen to the hangout before you join. Okay. <laughs> well, it was just... Um, yeah, so... Bri Brienne, when her character first appears, she's, you know, she obviously stands out. Um, and she is this just sort of massive, you know, fighting machine mm -hmm. who can hold her own and kick some ass. Um, and she's also just so crushing <laughs> on a man she will never have. But in some right. ways, that's also a bit of the chivalric code, that whole sort of romance of the times of medieval Europe with the troubadours who would have their lady love, but never hope to, you know, even touch the bottom of her shoe or whatever. <laughs> um, and that's kind of how Brienne was um, in her initial appearance. And that gave her a very sort of, you know, Sir Lancelot feel to her character that I think is the lens through which it's, she's actually the, probably one of the more consistent. She's changed the least by what's happened to her compared to the other women we've talked about so far. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I definitely agree that she is, she's been the most stalwart. You know, we've seen Brienne um, retain her code and actually kind of imbue that code onto Jamie in a lot of ways. Mm. Um, and that's one thing I think is the most interesting about her is that she, she is kind of the least political character in the Game of Thrones. She she is part of Renly's Rainbow Guard because she loves Renly, and she goes and she pledges herself to Catelyn Stark because she appreciates Catelyn's strength. Um, but she seems to have the greatest political effect on a person like Jaime Lannister, who's in this position of great power, um, and whom you know, it's almost seemingly impenetrable. You know, Cersei doesn't challenge Jamie in the same ways that Brienne does. Um, and you can see kind of over the course of time how he responds to this challenge and how he rises to it. And I, I find it interesting that's, that Brienne does have such an effect, even though she's not attempting to really play the Game of Thrones, she's just being herself. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I've got, I find that interesting, particularly in, a, in the context of Cersei, who is always playing the Game of Thrones, who's always using Jamie and always attempting to manipulate Jamie using her sexuality. Here's a woman who's not. Here's a woman who's just herself, and Jamie responds to that um, and, and gives a lot of trust to this woman um, who is, you know, just a, is a fighter and who is always going to be a knight. You know, there's... um. 
again, I'm, I'm not going to say too much, but there's a scene where <laughs> Brienne and Jamie part. And mm -hmm. in the Game of Thrones, they overlay that with Whitney Houston again singing, I Will Always Love You. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Brienne's like Do they seriously do that? Oh, is it, is no, it a the, YouTube video? In the something? Game of Thrones. It's a YouTube video, yeah. In oh, the Game, the of, Game of, Thrones. of Thrones. I was thinking that couldn't be that cheesy <laughs> on the fucking TV show. No, oh, no. My God. No, no. But it's um, do you think that do you think that um that that the the reason Jamie responds to that so um you know so readily uh, might be because that's just not something he's not really encountered before being being always in that kind of you know he's 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 always in that royal uh, scene with always around the people that all have these you know that uh, they all have these kind of fake um faces all the time the way they have to act to each other because of the because of the different positions and all that sort of stuff and then you've got brianne who comes along and doesn't i mean it's not that she doesn't um respect that um she's but, like janice from accounting she don't give a fuck <laughs> <laughs> right she doesn't have that mask on yeah well that's right i mean i suppose because as well sorry i, I was kind of i'm just still kind of wrap my head around um what was actually going on but she was there she was just dragging him back that's right so so she didn't give a fuck about you know him being you know the the the, the brother uh, the brother of of cersei or, or the son of of Ty or tywin or whatever she didn't give yeah. a crap about that stuff so she was just doing her thing and that might just be something that jamie's not used to you know oh i agree i agree he's totally not used to uh, a person without a veneer a person who's not out to use him in some way uh, just a person mm. who has a job and they're going to do that job mm. yeah 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 and i i think he appreciates that and i think that he you know he likes those blondes y'all um, yeah <laughs> she, she lives by a code that he understands well, a code that he's grown up with, but she's actually applying it in ways that he didn't apply it himself. Yeah. You know, so he, again, I think the positive influence is exactly right. I mean, he they have a, a kind of connection that's that's deeper than a, like a sexual relationship because it's it's having an impact on on sort of both of them. I think how she sees him um, changes over time as he learns from her. And obviously, you know, when he went back. Uh, he, from, okay, so when he helped her out, like you know this bit, Michael. What's that again? When, uh, when, yeah. So anyway, yeah, <laughs> I forget. I think that's earlier in the bear pit. I oh, know that. Uh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Right. So at that point, he had already like had it. She had had a profound impact because he would have. I think in any other <laughs> situation, had it been a different captor, walked away. Yeah. He oh yeah. He would have gone right. Yeah. Totally. And, and even earlier when he is, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't remember if this happens in the book, I believe it does, um, when um, they are first kind of captured by the Boltons and they're sitting down in camp and he um, is talking to, um, God, I forget the guy's name, and he says, you know, look, uh, you probably shouldn't rape her because she's, you know, the 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 daughter of Selwyn Tarth, and Tarth has is where all the sapphires are mined. I mean, if it had been nearly, if it had been Catelyn Tully, if it had been nearly any other woman, he would have been like, rape her, I ain't got time for this, just, it, get, yeah. just get me back to King's Landing. Um, but you can, we can see yeah. um, that, as, as uh, Christy just pointed out, we can see that <laughs> she does she has this profound impact on him and i think he has a profound impact on her because i don't think that brienne you know brienne kind of starts off the story as not really needing anyone and not wanting to lead anyone um but slowly um becomes comfortable with the idea of leading jamie of of leading him back toward this path of light if you will um mm. and and these are obvious. These are values that Jamie definitely admires. Um, these are. This is kind of something he goes into more in the books, and definitely in um, in the, when it comes to the show, uh, in sort of extra um, features that come on the DVDs or whatever. But it's clear that he valued, particularly when he became a knight, he valued the idea of you know protecting the weak and the innocent, and and that he really wanted to be a part of the King's Guard. He always wanted to be. Um, this sort of the the model chivalrous knight, but because of 
who he was because of him killing the Mad King and having to take on um, all of those characters and having to take on um, dealing with all of the things that people thought about him for killing the Mad King. He sort of, and because of kind of Cersei's influence, he sort of devolved into um, who he is when we meet him. And mm. Brienne's influence in a lot of ways reminds him, and I think this is definitely a lot clearer in the books, reminds him of the knights of old whom he admired, who made him part of the Kingsguard, whom, whose values are ones that he always wanted to adopt. Mm, sure, sure. I, um, I found, always found it quite interesting, um, the way that, that George wrote, um, because when you first when you first meet Jamie in the books, you know you don't you don't have it from his perspective, right? You you just right. you just see him through Catelyn's eyes, um, and maybe Rob, and maybe Tyrion, maybe. So you see them from you see him from other other people's perspectives, right? You know you yeah. hear about him beforehand. You um, uh, you know when when the the um the Lannisters are coming to 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 winter. Winterfell. I, I've forgotten the damn names. <laughs> when the right. Lannisters are coming, so um, You're not the so, only one. <laughs> <laughs> it's been like I say, it's been years since I have read the damn things, but they, I, I just, I adore the books. They're great. Um, the uh, and so, so you get this kind of um, proceeding. You know, the way that that obviously everyone thinks about Jamie and the way they perceive him uh, to begin with, and then I don't think it's until the second book, maybe, that you actually get stuff from Jamie's perspective it could it could have been earlier it, than that I, uh, I think let, it, no, but I, let me check because I kind of may have had the books open a little bit um because okay. I was going to cheat during this but that's okay um See, I don't I don't think there are any Jamie chapters in the first book no there aren't there aren't um as far yeah. as I know I, I so didn't it's not till, go ahead it's not till ahead. way after oh I'm sorry it's just gonna say it's not till way after um you know when when Ned dies uh, and and shit's getting real, that we start to 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 see Jamie from you know see his inner monologue, see how he's dealing with the whole thing, see how his relationship to Cersei and and you know his his reasoning for all that. I mean, like we kind of see him as this kind of gross dude who's sleeping with his sister and 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 just kind of an asshole. But then yeah. it kind of turns into what he actually does fucking love this woman, like really. A lot. That's why he's, and, and that's why he does some of the stuff that he did. That's why he pushed uh, Bran out of the window because he loves this woman so much that he would do anything for her, kind of thing, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, I, th I, I just, I kind of appreciated that about, um, I suppose, more about the books, about the writing of it. That that mm -hmm. um, that you don't get, uh, you know, he kind of holds off on letting you. Um, uh, you know, empathize with the character, and then suddenly he, he just switches it on a dime for you like that. And he does that with a couple of different characters. I know you, you know, you kind of just don't you you th you you put them and you think and and then he doesn't do it with other ones. You know, like he, he I don't think he ever does that with Joffrey. He never he never puts you in Joffrey's head no. and allows you to to try and empathize with with him. So I, I it's that's a, a an interesting choice, I suppose. Um, we don't... He even does it with Cersei, of course, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, you know, and at some points, I even just kind of feel a little bit bad for her. It's, I, it's, I it's agree, really, honey. you know, we, we, yeah. Me and Christy just had that discussion about Cersei as a as a <sighs> sympathetic character and also kind of as an asshole. Um, yeah, uh, but you I, can see how she's gotten to that place. That's the that's the right. thing. Initially, you initially you kind of don't because it's all just kind of this outside. You, you're seeing stuff happen to her and then you get inside her head and you see the stuff that she's trying to, that she has to go through and the stuff that she's been through and then the stuff that happens to her, you know, when she's locked in that dungeon and she's, you know, she's right. having a bad time. <laughs> you're just like, oh man, come on, George, what are you up to? You know? I, I got you. And part of that yeah. for me is the relationship that she had one thing that we don't ever really talk about either as the as when we talk about and when i say we i sort of mean um people who do game of thrones videos or who kind of do the in-depth analysis of game of thrones is that robert was effectively raping cersei cersei did yeah. not want to have sex with him and he was forcing her to 
Um, mm. Their relationship is one wrought with hurting each other and with not getting along and with arguing and fighting. And we sort of see, you know, we, we sort of perceive it as, oh, look at this woman. She is insane. She's sleeping with her brother. She's cheating on her husband to sleep with her brother. You know, he's the king. Um, what's so bad about Robert? He's just a bit drunk. And when you when, when you get those chapters in the Storm of Swords, because I think that's when we bo see both um, Jamie and Cersei's point of view chapters, um, mm. when you start to really get into Cersei's head, you realize that this woman has been abused by her husband. She's been, you know, sexually and physically abused by her husband. Um, she has been treated, um, and and me and Christy were talking about this earlier. She's been treated as basically a, a imperial breeder. Um, where you know she sold to Robert Baratheon and then mm. given away to the Tyrell, you know, and then later given away to the Tyrells. Um, mm. she's treated as if she has no agency, even though she's a person of relative intelligence. Um, and you just see, you know, but in Storm of Swords and oh, did I pause? Okay. In Storm of Swords and you know, later on, you really see how all of these things affect Cersei, and then to boot to be um, put into this, you know, put in the Sep dungeons, um, mm -hmm. and to have all of your crimes sort of laid bare, um, even though we could argue that she was almost justified in killing Robert. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and and it didn't uh, like because she was she was kind of it was supposed to be Lyanna Stark that was marrying Robert, right? And then that right. went south, and that's and then so Cersei was kind of pushed into that, right? Was that that's what happened? Um, yeah. yeah, originally too, she was supposed to marry Rhaegar, the the Mad King's son. Yeah, um, that plan fell through, um, partially because okay. of the deteriorating relationship between Tywin and um, the Mad King, and yeah. so Cersei yeah, Rhaegar was with 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 Lyanna, right? Uh, no, no, because he was married to um, er what's her ass Martell. Remember, Where he's married. Go ahead, babe. Where, where, where did Liana come? Because Liana was, because she was kind of the, the 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 linchpin of the whole the whole war. Like like Robert went to war to try and to try and save Liana Stark, right? Right. Remember that Rhaegar is married to I forget the girl's name. Um, uh, the the sister to Oberyn Martell. Uh, yeah. Um, Rhaegar Rhaegar develops. I don't know what kind of relationship with Lyanna, but at the mm. great tourney at Heron Hall, he gives her instead of his wife, um, the blue crown of winter roses and crowns her the queen of love and beauty. Um, right. After the tourney, he kidnaps her and they go and uh, to the tower or qu kidnaps in quotations. Um, mm. And they go to the tower of joy where um, Lyanna you know, dies, and um, I don't want to spoil anything, um, where Lyanna dies, um, and Rhaegar goes back to battle mm. um, where he is killed by Robert. But, yeah, right, the, uh, yeah, Robert um, wants Rhaegar dead because he, yeah, he kidnapped his uh, betrothed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's cool. I I've, I, I remember all that stuff. And then, uh, and, th and then after that, you've got Tywin going in uh, and so, so because because this is around the same time that the Mad King dies, is that right as well? This is this is you know, um, uh, Jamie does his thing about then as well, right? And then Tywin sends in the Mountain to to kill the kids, is that right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So, yeah. uh, Jamie kills the Mad King, and then that's when Tywin uh, and effectively Ty. Yeah, okay. So actually, I think I think he kills the Mad King kind of during the siege of King. Yeah, Landing, yeah, because yeah, that's the right. Mad King's already opened the gates. Mm, um, but that's all that's all around the same time though, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's definitely the same time. That's within cool. the same, you know, month and same and week, if you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, sorry, I'm just trying to uh, wrap my head remember all that stuff. That that's cool. Um so oh yeah, and so so Cersei uh was in that situation. She was betrothed to who? Nobody. Nobody. And so but then she was she was just like, yeah, so she was kind of just offered up, right? As a as yeah. a consolation prize. <laughs> yeah, and that's exactly and that's exactly what what Doctor Witter said that she's she's a, a consolation prize. Um, yeah, yeah. Christy's fine. Christy's fine. What's that? Just oh. Christy is okay. Okay. It's nice oh, <laughs> oh no, Christy, Sorry, Christy. listen. Yeah. If I listen, I tell people all the time because I'm I'm you know I'm like oh you know Doctor Winters I saw her video I'm talking to my boyfriend and she's and he's like 
And I'm like, listen, if I had a doctorate, I'd be calling people, all right, you have to call me Dr. Anderson all the time <laughs> because I'm an able. But so, um, so Christy, definitely Christy. But yeah. um, we, uh, but Cersei is, yeah, she's just basically a prize. And she definitely resents that. She's not, you know, we, and this is kind of reiterating what we were talking about earlier. She is a person who very much understands the gender roles of her society and does not agree with them. Um, yeah. Mm. Sure, sure, and um, and so she kind of, she kind of, uh, it, within that framework, um, has to, she has to work within that framework, obviously, mm -hmm. but she she does her best to try and manipulate that framework so that she uh, is the one kind of doing things, right? Right, right, and she definitely yeah. um, is working. Yeah, she's definitely working within. Um, the the society to she's definitely working within the role society has given her um which mm. is you're a woman so you rule through your children you manipulate if you can't manipulate your husband to get the policy that you want put forth you manipulate your children mm. yeah, yeah 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 um yeah and 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 her um sorry just going back to her um consolation prizeness and on top of that i was just thinking you know, mm -hmm. so she's she so she's got the 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 bullshit of being a consolation prize, but on the other hand, of also not being wanted at all. You know, so right. it, she's a she's the prize that is also not actually wanted or appreciated by this guy because he's in love with this other woman who is dead, right, and continues to be dead. Um, but he never. And then and then you get that great bit at the fucking um, you know, it, it kind of I suppose it's a bit of foreshadowing. Um, where when when they come to Winterfell and the very first thing that Robert wants to do is go and visit her grave, right? And, and Cersei's just like, C "Can we just got here? What are you up to? You know, for and real? So, can I can I like mm. can I like settle in? Like, come on, <laughs> yeah." Man. And he's like, "No, fuck that. I'm gonna go see her." You know, right? And and that, and that just speak and that what they've been they must have been together for ten years or something. Seventeen. And, and he's yeah, and he's still hung up on this woman. So you can imagine just the the shit that, that that Cersei's been through because of that, you know? Oh yeah, and that's yeah. that's to me part of the fun of of Cersei, and not not kind of you know the fun, not not making fun or anything like that, but the fun of exploring, the complexity, right? The fun mm -hmm. of exploring her character is how you sort of think, oh, what a stuck up you know b i t c h. Um, I try not to call uh, women bitches because I think that's demeaning. I'll call you a lot of other things, but I won't call you a bitch. Um, that's okay. But I think that Cersei, you know, you sort of go, oh, this blonde haired woman, I can't freaking stand her. You know, she's just like all the other stuck up blondes I ever met. Um, <laughs> but in reality, okay, I'm blowing up over here. But in reality, um, Cersei is a person who's gone through a lot, whose journey is probably comparable to Daenerys's journey. But mm. um, seems to well, me. Yeah. Yeah, but but very, has taken it quite differently, you know. Mm. Yeah, very much. Uh, Daenerys. Have you guys talked about Daenerys? Oh yeah. Yeah, but we can explore the kind of crossovers between characters. There's still more to discuss. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. we've got years of we got years and years of work to do here, guys. I mean, we 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 can friggin you know analyze Game of Thrones until we're all like skeletons and we'll just pass this on to our friends <laughs> like yes grand baby you're gonna be pass doing this hangout the, pass on the relay go for it right we'll have all of our kids here like yeah. oh look guys this is my new baby you know and they, on, that's they gonna be awkward because that means i'm gonna have to be banging on camera um you know <laughs> well, just turn <laughs> just turn the cam off all turn right it off. Keep, oh, don't go that way don't go that way <laughs> keep the sound <laughs> on because we want to keep people entertained oh um, jeez um, uh, yeah, Two minutes Daenerys, in heaven is better than um, one minute in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the Concord's reference. I like that. <laughs> Two minutes so, in heaven is better than one minute in heaven. Um, <laughs> Excuse me for yeah. a second, guys. Go for it. Um, so what, what did you guys kind of discuss about uh, Daenerys and, and, and Cersei? Well, we were going to get your thoughts, but like the one, if we wanted to talk about a female character we haven't discussed yet, it would be uh, You Know Nothing, Jon Snow. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, um, see, so I've got, oh man, I got some things to say about her because mostly my frustration with how she was dealt with in the TV show, because I, um, there were, and how Jon was kind of, now I've got to kind of rem remember because the way that things were kind of dealt with, I didn't like, 
I'm, my, my thoughts on this are going to be very sparse because it's been a long time, but I didn't like in uh, when, when John is taking her, he's, he's dragging her around and whatnot. And then he, uh, you know, he's supposed to, because uh, he's, he's been told that he needs to, to, to offer, right. He needs to kill her or something like right. that. That's right. Um, now in the, in the, in the um in the book no in the tv show i'm pretty sure that she gets the upper hand and that's fine i thought you know so thinking about it it's it's not necessarily uh maybe it's just giving her a bit more character or whatever but she get kind of gets the upper hand on john and runs away or whatever but in the book he misses on purpose and then she runs away you know so i i felt that was like a really quite a different uh change of of um of of what's the word of tone of how of their relationship as well. You know, that like, that was one of the, one of the defining parts of their relationship. I felt where, where he purposefully, you know, hits the rock instead of her and says, get out of here. And then she runs rather than uh, her, her, her like kicking his leg or whatever. And then him chasing after her and being like, Oh shit, I fucked it up. You know, um, I didn't like that. I, uh, so um, that was, what else did I um, think about that? Uh, like I say, well, my been... memory of the TV show is that he tries and he can't do it, and then she realizes that he can't do it, and then yeah, I think she kicks him or something and runs off. Yeah. Um, and and in in the way that you remembered it, he missed on purpose, and then so he was more yeah. like her a chance, and so that established a closer bond between them. Is that what you were? That that's what I kind of thought. I thought that you know it, it seemed more. He, he, him missing on purpose he, either meant that he he was just you know just because he's a decent human being i think yeah because it because it kind of it kind of speaks more to the to john's character i felt that that he's the kind of person who does not want to kill an innocent person like that you know so it, it, and so it didn't necessarily mean that that he was in love with her or whatever at that point but but it, it, it definitely meant as a character john is is yeah I, I, that, that's right i mean because i kind of felt uh, I only got to about halfway through season three, and but I, I felt like John's character in the in the books, uh, sorry, in the shows was more. He was more kind of just like a, a grumpy teenager, and he would kind of lash out and do stupid stuff. And but in the book, he he, I felt like he had more, um, like in that sense, some more more moral framework where he would, you know, he he wouldn't kill an innocent person like that because that's just not the sort of person he was. So in that case, he he missed on purpose and then kicked her away and off she went kind of thing. And there was another instance where that kind of happened along that journey where b b before he got to where the wild can um, kind of are. And I can't remember. It was, it was, it was something to do with, um, with that guy who wears the bone mask, but I can't for the life of me remember. So that was more to do with John than, than her. Sorry. Um, no, that's okay. Well, one yeah. of the things that we were doing before was sort of talking about the societies that the characters grew up in and that how that mm. impacted the kinds of person that they could be. Yeah, so true. The, the wildlings are like the most, um, if, if I wanted to know what society would be like under anarchism, I think you'd look at the wildlings <laughs> because, mm. you know, they don't have uh, naturally any leadership and it's a lot of competition and, and just people working together because they want to. Um, yeah. you know, there's no organized government, there are no lords, they don't bend the knee. Yeah. Um, and so the kind of woman that she can be compared to the kind of women that John has experienced, mm. that, um, are very, very different cultural experiences. So. Yeah. And that kind of breaks him after a while, doesn't it? That, that experiment, that, like that differing, uh, you know, it, it, it tests his, uh, his resolve as a, as a um as a knight of the oh sorry what do you call it see i'm forgetting all the damn names the, the night's um, watch yeah the night's watch yeah a, a a a warrior of the night's watch you know and obviously eventually he sleeps with her again and again and again um <laughs> yeah, he goes and, you know, back for more <laughs> yeah obviously feels pretty bad about i mean who wouldn't ginger jeez um <laughs> uh we're amazing um but uh Little advertising yeah, so, there for the ladies. Yeah, yeah, ladies, <laughs> what up? Yeah, That's right, ginger. I'm, an, I'm a Game of Thrones nerd, and I like, and I'm a ginger. What more could you want? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, the um, so I suppose. What, do 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 you think? Um, what what do you think has the most impact on 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 John's resolve in that sense? Do you think it's it's like if she wasn't there, 
would that society have and its and its framework and stuff had as much impact on John? Do you reckon? I don't think so. I think the fact that she took his V card. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's yeah, huge. But, well, he was only how, he was only sixteen, wasn't he? In the books, yeah, he was. Of course, yeah. they were all much. You know, a lot of the characters were much younger. Um, mm. So, but yeah, that's sort of that prime age <laughs> for it. Um, but it's not just. Yeah you know, like the physical attraction, I think that she challenges him. Yeah. You know, she stands up to him. She knows more things than he does. And that's uh, a position where I don't think he, his character would have ever been before. And so he has to sort of rely on her to protect him and speak up for him and kind of show, teach him how to uh, adapt to the society and how to be free. Yeah. Um, and she's, so, I suppose. Yeah. I was just gonna say, I suppose, it, like that the um, the way that society is and the way that it's run um, was was forced upon him more by her because uh, because they were so intimate because they could they had that connection. So he uh, probably uh, one would be more open to to how it is because of because of his affection towards her, but also because um, uh, what was I gonna say something else. Yeah, just in a way that, that like, if he was just kind of living there, you know, um, that he wouldn't have kind of had if, if it wasn't for this, this um, you know, having this this deeper connection with the person um, right. that, that kind of requires him to, to, to take on those ideals, I suppose, right? Right, because if you think about it, his integration into that society, if it had been only men that he was interacting with, it would only be, like, the kind of public sphere of their lives. Mm -hmm. But yeah. because he had greed then he had someone who was saying, hey, you need to come home to me. You need to stay alive. You know, you need to not yeah, yeah. go, you know, you need to not betray me or I'll cut your balls off. Mm. Um, and, and I think also that betrayal of his, his of his vows as well is kind of important because, you know, that that that, that distances him more from, from where he's come from. I, I, I can't remember whether, whether that's a, you know, whether that's like a looming thing, like him thinking I can't go back to that now because I've broken my vows, so I need to, is that is that like a thing or? I don't know. I mean, I guess I was sort of thinking of it more from a, the story point of view that when he broke his vows to the Night's Watch, you know, mm -hmm. he was doing it to sort of um, a group of, of allies and friends and fellow soldiers. But when he went back to the Night's Watch, he betrayed her. Yeah. Yeah, not yeah, that's really right. the wildling so much. I mean, obviously there was the you know he he got you know he did betray them too, but it was really that was the one that that made him feel the worst. I think. Mm, mm. Sorry, continue. I, I talked over. No, that was that was it. I just don't know where where sweets went here. She's on. Oh, that's all right. Well, we could talk. Uh, she she said, uh, "Give me a minute." She went off. Um, oh, okay. We could talk about uh, Daenerys. I'd like to to. Uh, yeah. Was... Yeah trying to think about the connection between her and, and kind of Cersei's journey because so Daenerys, uh, Daenerys has grown up with, with her brother who has always been, so, so oh, she's always just kind of been, yeah. So she's kind of always just been subservient to, to that all of her life. Right. Right. Um, and to when we first meet her. And so she's always kind of driven, j just kind of pushed in different directions by all the men that are, um, a, a part of her life, right? Right. Either her brother, who basically planned to sell her off at some point, or the people <clears throat> who were taking care of them, who wanted to get something out of both of them when they, if they ever got back into power. Mm. Which is kind of similar, like we were just saying to 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 mm -hmm. Cersei's kind of thing, right? Um, but I suppose, um, I suppose, like. If you, you if you if you compare and contrast those two kind of things like Cersei being pushed into this relationship um, at, at that young age and then being rejected for 17 years and then Danny on the other hand being pushed into this relationship and then kind of rising to the challenge and 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 gaining that bond with Carl Drogo and 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 falling in love with him mm -hmm. uh, that kind of that, that difference of 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 how um how they kind of reacted to those those being put into those unwanted relationships right because Danny was terrified by Carl Drogo obviously um yes initially yeah definitely yeah. 
yeah, I think that's an interesting, again, the kind of like a, a mirroring of two experiences. You know, how yeah. would it have been different if you, mm. you change the conditions, like a little bit of an experiment, and you could kind of then play out the possible outcomes. And yeah, I mean, her relationship with Carl Drogo was um, unlike when, you know, Robert died. Um, you know, she, well, Daenerys had lost everything, right? Her child and her husband and her mm um her call and just you know yeah. she's left with a few people but then of course these dragons um which are now mm. her children um and she's got then three dragons like cersei has three children so yeah true mm. yeah it's interesting mm. I, I, I kind of thought about it uh all of that how, how they kind of go and so then so then uh daenerys kind of goes off and starts because then she goes is it from there she goes to the slavers place uh, so kinda... first they wander through the desert and they come to Karth. Oh, that's right. That's right. They come to Karth and then there's that that guy, uh, there's the guy and then she gets betrayed by her uh, one of her handmaidens. Um, and the house of whatever it was. Yeah, that whole thing. I've forgotten about that. Shit. And then she gets out of that and then she. Uh... Yeah. Does does she come out of that with more stuff though? Is that is that kind of well, a thing? Well, she's is got it... her dragons back. Where are yeah. my dragons? That's where Oh, that's right. But yeah, because there's the there's the whole um the warlock dude, right? Who's, who yeah. steals them away from her. Yeah, okay. That's right. And then she has a dragon. That's right, because the dragons are kind of a bargaining pin for a mm -hmm. whole lot of it, right? Like she right. she she gets an army with those dragons, right? Yeah, she basically has to find you know, from um basically her brother to Carl Drogo to the dragons. She sort of has have these stepping stones <laughs> and other sources of power to kind of yeah. carry her along. She hasn't had it sort of in her own right at that point, you know, when she goes yeah, into yeah, yeah. Get the, get, even getting the unsullied, as you say. Mm. And then she, she finds uh the big dude and um and the the the, the white knight um in that Port side town. The um, are you talking about uh, the the um, sir? What's his name? Yeah, the 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 um, uh, whatever his name. You know, the one who 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 was part of the king's guard and comes. <laughs> yeah, the one who got thrown out mm. by Joffrey. Yeah. See, hey, sir I Barrison like that as well. Selmy. Yeah, here he is. She's back. Barrison Selmy, that's the name. Hey. Um, I like that as well. I mean, you know, it's obviously the limitation of the media, but like in the, um, the style of media, sorry, you know, so in the book, you know, you, you're with these characters, the, the, the big guy, whatever you call him. Um, I can't remember what they called him. He's a big bellied guy and he's, and, and there's him and then there's Barris and Selmy, but you don't know him. He's like, he's like a, he's like a, you know, he's got a, no one knows who he is. He's just like a, an old guy who's good with a staff or whatever. Um, and it's revealed quite later on that it was actually Barristan and Selmy. Oh, because, uh, because someone else, oh, because I, so, someone else recognizes him or whatever. Um, uh, yeah, right, right. Like he's the, going by something white beard. Someone like that, yeah. And so there's this reveal later on, and you're just like, oh my god, you know. But obviously, in the TV show, you can't do that because because uh, you know he's you see him, you know. Right. So you're like, oh, it's that same guy, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. Well, I was just trying to piece together the rest of Daenerys's journey. Um, uh we had gone to the slavers bay basically. okay and we're yeah. just looking at some of the parallels between her and cersei like the just or the contrast actually i should say i would say one of the major contrasts particularly in slavers bay is daenerys's when uh, i i know this happens in the show and i'm not quite i don't quite remember if this happens in the books or not um she's having a council and she talks to Jorah and she says, why should anyone trust me to rule? Just, just asking herself basic questions, just being able to analyze her own behavior and say, okay, why, sh why do I deserve to be a queen, right, over these people? Why do I deserve to rule over them? Um, and Jorah responds, well, you're a Targaryen, you're the last Targaryen, you're the mother of dragons. And she goes, uh, I got to be able to do more than that. Yeah, I can't just have these dragons and then people want me to fucking rule them. I've got to be able, um, I've got to so be able, right? I've got to be able to um, to rule on my own. Where Cersei's like, uh, I'm a Lannister. That's that's my claim to fame. Okay, mm. that's why I deserve to be on the throne. I'm the firstborn child, and I'm a Lannister. And I think that that just that self awareness of 
being able to be critical of oneself, you know, especially, you know, when we're talking about, especially here on YouTube where people are not very critical of themselves. Um, <laughs> not saying y'all, but you, but we know the people who are out there who aren't very critical of themselves. Um, I am first generation fucking skeptic. And I, <laughs> <laughs> Um, just they have the ability to to look at one's own decisions critically um, is a big separator between Cersei and um, Daenerys. Cersei, who cannot bear criticism, who does not like anyone, even herself, questioning her own decisions. Um, Do you think that's also a, um, a product of of the again those differing societies? You know, like Daenerys is out there in this kind of more uh, raw you know, uh, not so structured society where, you know, like in, in, uh, um, Westeros, it is, you know, that just the name of a person, uh, definitely does wield power did, and, mm. and, and, and for, especially for the, for the commoners and all that sort of stuff, it's going to wield some power, but that n not so much out in, in, in East, uh, Esos or whatever you yeah, yeah. call it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so, so Daenerys kind of has to, you know, have something else, you know, she's kind of definitely forced to. Well, I would argue that the Daenerys is ruling in a society that is definitely, uh, I would say just a stratified, although different in a different way, because right. the, the societies of Slaver's Bay are stratified by slavery and by social class. I mean, it's not just slavery. Obviously, you know, poor people are not going to have the same privileges as wealthy people uh, because they don't have that sort of, yeah, I mean, they actually do. They have this, this sort of, royal house you know of the blood royal kind of um society and they certainly have a feudal society in that they they do identify by ancient houses um mm. and but i would say that daenerys i think is more critical because she has seen what happens to a person like viserys right who mm. is a lot yeah. like Cersei is uncritical of his decisions, who thinks that he should rule because he is the heir of his father and doesn't have that sort of critical eye. Um, I think that, yeah, uh, um, she, she has learned from the people around her that if she's going to be a good ruler, she's got to be willing to look at her own decisions and assess them, as opposed mm -hmm. to a person like Viserys, who is just, who is obviously losing his mind. Um, mm -hmm. Me and my boyfriend actually just had this discussion about um, kind of how responsible is the series for his actions, but we'll we'll have to save that for another discussion um, for you for all of us. But um, we, I think that Daenerys has had a different experience, and certainly her different experience has led her to be a different kind of ruler. But I think mm -hmm. that Cersei. Um, even though, you know, you could argue Cersei's got way more life experience. She's 40. Daenerys is, you know, in her 20s in the show. And, in, you know, and, and I think that there she's more like 30. I think Cersei's more like 35, 36 in the books. And Daenerys is like 14, 15. Um, yeah. I think that regardless, Cersei, even though Cersei has all this life experience, she's still... Um, she she is so entrenched in kind of <coughs> Westerosi politics and in her own mind and with the prophecies that she's received and all these other things that she mm. is very uh, you know that that she is mired in all this and can't be critical of herself right because i think partially because she thinks hey i'm gonna die my my children are gonna die and um there's nothing i can do about it and so she's yeah, not yeah. critical, but I, I think that's part of it, right? Not the whole, not the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah. And 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 Cersei's definitely not. Uh, I mean, definitely not as crazy as as Viserys was. Um, but it's interesting sure. that parallel, that parallel as well. The um, you know, the the um, the reliance on on the name and on the power that that name wields right i mean because that's, mm -hmm. that's there was a series this whole thing i'm i'm the series last of the targaryens and and in the end carl drogo didn't give a fuck about that shit <laughs> you know right. and so you know and 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 so i mean all all that kind of has to happen to cersei i suppose is is for her to come up against someone and, and it does happen um that doesn't give a fuck about her name uh she you know and she gets thrown in the in them dungeons and you know her name can't <laughs> help her there can it right yeah. and then and then so 
and 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 like you say then then all of her sins kind of come back to roost you know like the way that she's treated all the people and stuff i mean i suppose with with daenerys like if she you know she goes about ruling in a way where she's actually uh you know people respect her and and you know rather than just respecting the name and doing stuff because of the name you know if daenerys was put in that situation that might be um you know people might go to war for that rather than just leaving her you know right mm. and i i think that and i agree i agree that that that's that's kind of the parallel between uh series and and um cersei um, I will say that the one thing that that you can compare in terms of Cersei and Daenerys is, I thought I had a point there, but I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were just point. saying before the 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 um, the the parallel that I that I kind of thought of was was how they had both been thrust into these unwanted relationships, you know. So so Cersei with Robert and right. Daenerys with with Khal Drogo, and the ways they both dealt with that so um D D Daenerys kind of rose to the occasion and and eventually you know falls in love with Khal Drogo and he in turn back with her but mm -hmm. with Cersei it obviously doesn't go that way and she's you know so so stuck in this uh relationship for you know unloving relationship for 17 years where she's abused and raped and all this other business you know right and Cersei does oh yeah, uh, Cersei does love. I mean, initially, before you know, she kind of has the yeah. same infatuation with Robert that she ends up that she had with uh, Rhaegar, which you mm. know he was this you know beautiful, fierce black beauty. But then all of her illusions are shattered the moment they have their wedding night. Um, yeah. I think that Cersei. I think that too. It's the experience. Cersei had lived all of her life as a, you know, a, a, we, we kind of talked about this with Tywin too, had lived all of her life as a very wealthy woman whom had all of her whims taken care of, who was never really in any physical danger for the most part. Um, where Daenerys and Viserys for a great bulk of their lives lived on the streets of the free cities. Um, they mm -hmm. were beggars. And mm -hmm. kind of going from from person to person and hoping that they could have a place to sleep because they were of the house Targaryen. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for Daenerys, because of that situation, she is, you know, Vias Dothrak is like, hey, here's a here's a stable place where I can sleep, where people respect me, where I don't have to worry about people taking from me or her harming me. Um, and so she's hell yeah, you know, I'll live in friggin' Vias Dothrak. And of course, you know, in the books, it's like he's got a 190 room mance and biased author and what have you but um call drogo does but um yeah. i think that daenerys situation has made her more adaptable to changing circumstances where cersei's has not and yeah, i think that's true. sort of the lesson of game of thrones one, one of the big lessons is that the more that you have the less that you can maneuver right the less that you have the more that you can adapt to changing circumstances which is you know hey evolution is if you can't adapt you're a dead end yeah yeah yeah, yeah true story and i suppose that's kind of what like like Tyrion's like that right he's he's like the lowest of the rung in that family and so he's got kind of the least uh to kind of go on and so he ends up having to deal you know he he kind of just has to go with the flow of things and eventually he's mm -hmm. kind of thrust out into you know into nothing but he can kind of deal with that because that's kind of what he's been dealing with his whole life right oh yeah and that and and cersei and tywin's hatred of Tyrion have definitely mm. um contributed to Tyrion <laughs> being a better player of the game of thrones because he he doesn't have his father to hide behind i mean i you know i i really want to talk about this too is how jamie and cersei and Tyrion all hide behind tywin Right. Mm. Their their entire relationship is, but my father will come, you know, and the best thing that could have ever happened to any of them was Tywin's death. Um, yeah. But Tyrion, the <laughs> least, had Tywin to hide behind. And so Tyrion has always had to use his guile to get himself out of situations that he may have gotten himself into um, to survive because he's yeah. always been the lowest Lannister. And um, he did. And he had to, yeah, and he right. always had. Yeah, he had Jamie. Um, to a point. Yeah. Right, and um, but I think that that made him um, a hell of a lot more adapt. Uh, is this a word adaptable than yeah. um, 
his sister or or his brother because when his i mean remember jamie you know jamie is willing to give up the moment he loses his hand he's like yep yeah, i'm done game of thrones i'm over. done i'm out <laughs> right? 